Welcome back. In the last uh, two videos, we proved two important theorems about uh, fixed fields and now we are ready to start defining uh, Galois extensions and then study them in detail. So, just to quickly recall, we proved the first theorem which says that if you have two fields and a bunch of distinct field homomorphisms, then the degree of k over the fixed field of those is at least e the number of those homomorphisms. But if the fields are equal, so namely k equal to L and the homomorphisms that you are considering are actually automorphisms and there are n distinct ones and they form a group, then the degree of k over the fixed field is exactly equal to n. Okay? So, in this video, we are going to start defining uh, Galois extensions. So, <clears throat> first let me quickly recall something I did in a video earlier, but I want to repeat it again. <clears throat> let k over f be a field extension. Then this symbol here Galois g a l k over f represents all f automorphisms of Okay, uh, this we claimed earlier and I did not prove this, but uh, this is a trivial exercise is a group under composition. So, this is easy to prove. So, let me just say a couple of lines about this, but not give you a rigorous proof. I am taking all f automorphisms, right. So, identity is certainly an auto f automorphism. <clears throat> and uh, if sigma 1, sigma 2 are f automorphisms, it is a triviality to check that their composition is also is an f automorphism, right that is all. So, you have inverse by definition an automorphism has an inverse sigma 1 inverse is an f automorphism that is all. Okay. So, it is not in general an abelian group we will see that later because composition is not commutative and Galois groups can be non commutative. So, this is called the Galois group of the extension. Okay, so, in the later part of this video, I am going to give you more examples of this or explain the examples that I gave earlier. But now, let me prove a corollary to the previous theorem, which is actually an important proposition for us. <coughs> let k be any field and let G be a finite group of automorphisms of k. Okay. So, G is a finite group of automorphisms of k. Let F be the fixed field of, of G. So, these are the elements that are fixed by all the elements of G. Then G happens to be the Galois group of K over F. Okay. So, this is a trivial statement, we will explain this in a minute. Okay. So, what we know is that we know from theorem 2 of the previous video, theorem true about the fixed fields, so this says that K colon F is cardinality of G, right. This is exactly say G, um, say it is denoted by N. If you have a field, theorem 2 remember is exactly this. If you have a field and a distinct set of automorphisms, then the degree of K over the fixed field is exactly N. Okay, so, I am denoting by N the cardinality or order of G and this is equal to that. Now, also clearly this is just a straightforward statement, G is contained in Galois group of K over F. This is because 
what is the galois group of k over f it is all f automorphisms of k galois group consists of all f automorphisms of k but any sigma in g fixes f right by definition because f is the fixed field fixes let me say every element of f that is sigma a of equals a for all a in f right so sigma is in f automorphism simple right galois k over f consists of all f automorphisms of k g consists of a collection of automorphisms whose fixed field is f so sigma of a is equal to a for all a in f which is to say sigma is an f map this is what i defined way back in the course you have an extension an f automorphism is something which fixes f point wise so sigma of a is equal to a for all a in f means sigma is an f automorphism so sigma is in the galois group so the proof of this inclusion is given here so g is certainly contained in the galois group of k over f we need to show the other inclusion so suppose it is not equal suppose sigma is in <coughs> and let's say sigma is not in g so suppose this is a strict inclusion if possible let let it be strict inclusion in which case we can pick a sigma which is in the galva group but not in g and let s equal g union sigma i, I have been using the letter s to denote uh, collections of maps which are which do not form a group so g is a group but g union sigma is of course not a group because you are just adding one element most of the time it will not be a group so let's call it s now what we know is that n plus 1 which is the order of s cardinality of s is less than or equal to k colon k power s this is by theorem 1 if you take any collection of homomorphisms which do not necessarily form a group then you can apply only theorem 1 which says that degree over the fixed field is at least as much as the number of homomorphism so in this case n plus 1 but k colon k s where is k s so maybe i should draw the picture here so k is here because sigma so maybe i'll squeeze in the argument here sigma is in galva k over f so sigma a is equal to a for all a in f right so sigma that means this implies a is in the fixed field of because a is anyway fixed by everything in g, g right so a is fixed by by definition because a is in f and f is the fixed field but a is also fixed by sigma by this st statement because sigma is in galva k over f by definition galva k over f is all f automorphisms right of k so sigma being in galva k over f that so this is a very simple point but this is crucial to the whole theory sigma is in galva k over f so sigma and f is the sorry sigma is in galva k over f galva k over f is the collection of f automorphisms of k so if a is in f sigma fixes a so a is in a is fixed by sigma as well as everything in g so a is fixed by g everything in g union sigma that means a is in ks that means ks is a super field of f so that means f is contained in ks so this is the tower k contains ks ks contains f once f is contained in ks k colon ks is greater than equal to k colon s so because this is the product of this times this so k colon f is at least as much as k colon ks but k colon kf k colon f we already know is equal to n okay so this is a contradiction so you will see where we will use this theorem later on but this is a contradiction you have n plus 1 is strictly 
or n plus 1 is greater less than or equal to n. So that's a contradiction. That means g equals galva. The contradiction is to the fact that there is something in sigma that's the, the, some sigma in galva k over f that's not in g. So that must be the uh, that must be an equality. So okay, the proposition is proved. So let me write one corollary to this. You may not see why the corollary is important now, but as you learn more, um, you will see this is a statement that you will use often. Let k be a field. Um, there can't be two different groups, let us say finite groups of automorphisms of K with the same fixed field. Okay, that is because if you have two different, uh, if you have a group G, that group G determines the uh, <coughs> the the fixed field in this way, right? So the, if you have G one and G two have the same fixed field, G one must be equal to the Galva group of K over the fixed field, which is G. So in other words, if you have G one and G two have same fixed field, so the proof, then G1 equals Galva group of K over F by the corollary by the proposition which is also same as G, G2. Okay? So that tells me that there cannot be two different groups which have the same fixed field. Okay, so now let me give you the most important definition of the whole course and then we will uh, do some examples in this video uh, to, to understand this definition. Okay, so let k over f be a finite extension of fields. So this is the ex definition of Galva extensions. So this is the crucial statement for us in the whole course. Let k over b be a finite extension of fields. Then k over f is called a Galva extension a Galva extension if f is the fixed field of Galva k over f. Okay, so this definition will take some uh, uh, getting used to, but let me give a remark and a few examples to, to motivate this definition and give some examples. So note that, first note that F is always contained in this came up in the previous proof, always contained in the fixed field of Galva K over F. Why is this? The reason is if sigma belongs to Galva K over F and A belongs to F, then sigma A is equal to A by definition because sigma is an F automorphism of K. Right? Galva K over F consists of things which are automorphisms of k that fix f point wise. So, sigma in galva k over f and a in f means sigma a is in a. That means a is in the fixed field of this. Right? So, a is fixed by all the galva group elements. So, a is in the gal fixed field. So, hence f itself is contained in so, emphasizing this, this always holds. Okay? So, we always have this tower for any given finite extension. So, this always holds.
the extension is Galois if the bottom part is an equality. The extension is Galois. if k galva k over f is equal to f this may not always happen this doesn't always happen okay so galva extensions are those extensions where there is an equality So let's say equality holds if k over f is Galois. Okay, so let me uh, quickly do a few examples and then we'll stop in this video. So examples. Okay, so the first example. Let's take k equal to q adjoint i and f to be q. Is k over f Galois? Okay, so what is a Galois group? So in all these cases, you have to first find out the Galois group. So let's take G to be 1 comma sigma where 1 is of course the identity map and sigma is the map from K to K which sends I to minus I. Remember any automorphism of K must send I to a conjugate of I meaning another root of x square plus 1 which is the irreducible polynomial of i. So only roots of x square plus 1 are i and minus i. So sigma one sigma sends i to i, 1 sends i to minus i. Sorry, 1 sends i to i, sigma sends i to minus i. <coughs> then what is kg? So we have a few statements here. So using the proposition that I did earlier, kg, so uh, without using that, let us say what is kg kg is between k is here, kg is here and q is here, f is here, f is q, this is qi. <coughs> kg remember is always going to contain f or actually let me not use that remark, I am just saying that both 1 and sigma fix every rational number. In fact, Q is the prime field. So, this is something we have. Now, this proposition here, G is a finite group of automorphisms. In, the, in our example, there are two <coughs> and F is the fixed field. In this case, KG is the fixed field. So, K G is equal to Galois group of, okay. So, actually let me not use that. By theorem 2, What is the in degree of this? Okay, so this is 2. That means this is inequality, <coughs> right? Because this whole thing is 2. So this is already 2. That means kg is equal to q. So kg is equal to q. Now let us apply the proposition that I proved at the beginning of today's video. So if you have a field, a finite group of automorphisms, f is a fixed field, then g is the Galois group of by proposition that I proved today, g is the Galois group of k over kg. Remember proposition as always proving that, so remember proposition by this version, remember this by as what we have is Galois group, okay. So what do I mean by this? So G is the Galois group of K over KG. It is a good way to remember this. So if K is any field, G is an arbitrary group of finite automorph, finite, arbitrary finite group of automorphisms of K and F is the fixed field. So I, I it is useful to write k power g so that you keep track of that. Then g is Galois group of k over f. So that means g is Galois group of k over kg. In this case, g is Galois group of k over kg, but kg is q. So g is the Galois group of q adjoint i, which is k over q. So g is the Galois group of 
Galois group of Q over Q and its fixed field is Q. Hence, Q is K power Galois K over Q. Right? This is exactly what Galois extension is. So, again remember this as K over F is Galois if F is equal to the fixed field of the Galois group of K over F. So, remember this as K over F is Galois if F is the fixed field of the Galois group. Remember fixed, field is, fixed fields are always represented by K power that group. So, F is e equal to K power Galois K over F implies k over f is galva here q is the fixed field of galva k power q q equals k power galva k over q and hence you can also directly prove that galva group of q i over q is actually just g because there are only two automorphisms you think about this so you can prove this directly directly also by just arguing that any automorphism must send i to a conjugate of i and there are only two possibilities. Okay? But please there is a subtle thing here involved. So, please carefully think about this uh, and make sure that you understand every point that I am using. What about k q at joint cube root of 2 over q. So, here there is only one automorphism right because cube root of 2 must go to cube root of 2 omega cube root of 2 as we discussed this many times or this or this but only this is available in k these are not in k so, the only automorphism is the identity automorphism. So, I, I am going to go over this fast, but this is hopefully clear to you. The Galois group of k over a, f, so f is q, so k is q at joint root 2, q at joint cube root of 2, f is q. Galois group is exactly 1. So, what is the fixed field of the Galois group? fixed field of identity element is k and it is not equal to f. So, in this case q at joint cube root of 2 or q is not Galois. So, you see where in, this is an example where this is not an equality. In fact, the fixed field happens to be all of k. Okay? So, this is not an equality as we will see more examples later. The fixed field could be something in between these two. Okay, so, one more example I want to give the third example. So, here I take uh, q adjoined root 2 comma i as q, k and f as q. Okay. So, here one can show can show this uh, essentially we have shown this earlier following the notation that I used. Okay. So, notation that I used in an earlier video where we looked at four automorphisms of k. One is identity automorphism, the other one sends root 2 to root 2 i to a minus i, one sends root 2 to minus root 2 i to i, the third one sends root 2 to minus root 2 i to minus i and the third one is actually equal to the product of sigma 1 and sigma 2. So, here if you think about this, the index of k, I mean you can directly prove and we did directly say this directly prove that k power galois k over f is actually f okay this we have checked by explicitly figuring out which are fixed elements but also we can argue like this using the theorems that we have proved so we have k 
k power galva k over q and q the cardinality of the galva group here is 4 okay so that's by the theorem 2 this is 4 right because k colon so theorem 2 can be remembered as k colon k power g is cardinality of g this is a short and convenient way to remember theorem 2 k colon k power g is cardinality of g so this is the cardinality of g is 4 so this is 4 but so is this so this must be 1 so this implies k power galva k over q is q and hence k over q is galva okay so just to complete this uh, circle of ideas another way to prove g that i defined here um, that this is exactly the galva group again you can argue this by showing that there is not much choice for i and root 2 but there is another way to prove that this is equality of galva groups using our results so call this group g so call this group g then and let's look at k power g because q is the prime field q is fixed by g obviously so q is contained in kg so we have this tower by theorem 2 this is 4 so by theorem 2 this is 4 and this is 1 so theorem 2 implies kg equals q but by the proposition that we proved today g equals galva k over k power g today's proposition implies g equals g is now this is galva k power k over k power g okay this means this is galva k over q because k power g is q so g is galva remember proposition can be remembered like this g equals galva k over kg but kg equals q by theorem 2 so g is equal to galva k over q okay so these are various strands of ideas that we are learning in this course okay now i'll not uh, i'll write this for now but we'll discuss this later is the fourth example if you take uh, the field extension finite fields f p power r over f p so p is prime of course and r is a positive integer this is galva this is a galva extension okay so i uh, i want to stop here because uh, we have done enough but we will do this later by uh, I'll, I'll start next video with some problems and in that video we will discuss this in uh, more detail okay so just i wanted to write this however because i want to give examples of galva extensions and also an example which is something not galva okay so let me stop this video uh, in the last three four videos i have thrown lots of material at you so please carefully follow these and i have sort of indicated how to remember these things in a convenient fashion so make sure that you um, digest all these things carefully so theorem 2 is this uh, theorem 2 remember is the statement that k colon k power g is cardinality of g that is how you remember theorem 2 theorem 1 is k colon k power s okay so this is here s is not a group so s is uh, any collection of homomorphisms so k colon k power s is at least cardinality of s k colon k power g is cardinality of g here g is a group and then we defined finite extension uh, a finite extension is galva if f is equal to k power galva k over f okay so the, using these short forms we we proved various facts here please carefully think about all these things because 
it's important for you to digest these uh, very, very well before we proceed to the next concepts. Let me stop this video. In the next video, we'll do some problems to make sure that we understand all these concepts. Thank you.